Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys at Magic. This is Hunter, Shane, and David. Say what up, boys. Yo, what's going on? What's up, nerds? It is March 14th, 2023, and Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth, the Magic the Gathering set, has been giving us a first look. So we've got a whole bunch of brand new cards, Lord of the Rings edition, to go over. Uh, first and foremost, this set is specifically a modern set. Is that correct, David? So it's like a straight to modern, but I mean, all these cards are also going to be legal in uh, EDH as well. And then I believe that they are also legal in Legacy um, for all 12 of you who play that. Hey, hey. <laughs> you got a lot. Of I'm not shitting on the format, by the way. I think the format is fantastic. It's just it's not an approachable format. Yeah, it gets kind of expensive if you want to compete. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and dive into the Lord of the Rings cards with, of course, the One Ring. The One Ring is four generic mana for a legendary artifact. It has indestructible. It says when the One Ring enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything until your next turn. It also says at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life for each burden counter on the One Ring, and you can tap it to put a burden counter on the One Ring. Then draw a card for each burden counter on the one ring. Shane, what do we think? This seems like a cool card. This seems like something you could play in EDH. I mean, I guess modern too. But EDH, get protection from everything for a turn. Uh, start slowly tapping it, giving yourself burden counters and drawing cards. Seems really good. Is it good though? Because I feel like at some point, Losing five life to draw one card, is that good? Losing six, losing seven? Well, hopefully not. Yeah. It's going to hurt a lot. Maybe in the beginning, but how often are you cracking this later in the game, David? I mean, life is an expendable resource, both in real life and, of course, in the game. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think this is actually going to hurt you for as much as what you probably think. Depends on how many cards you want to draw. A lot. All of them. And I mean, there's also ways to like remove counters from things too. So I think that this is actually a really powerful card. And I think that there's ways for you to be able to get around its downside. Yeah. I know you are a fan of Lord of the Rings, David. You're probably the biggest fan of it, all three of us. What do we think of the art of this card? I think the art is cool. I did see a, a post on Reddit and somebody had made a comment of like, you can't actually see the inscription on the ring. And then somebody else had replied to that and would be like, dude, it would be really cool if the inscription was on the foil version of this card, uh, which I think personally, because more well, spoilers, it didn't happen. But I do think that was a missed opportunity um, just for like the foil and non foil versions to have like a slight tweak or a difference there. I think that would have been really cool. That would have been pretty sweet. From an overall aesthetic, like design choice of this, though, um, having it deal one damage to you, I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of that. Like the ring, obviously, like it, it gives power and then it also like slowly kind of drives the wielder of it a little insane. Um, and I think that I probably would have loved this card a little bit more just for flavor purposes if they tried to match that up with like going insane in magic. And that's typically depicted as like you're discarding cards. So I, I would have loved it if like, you were drawing cards, but this, instead of dealing damage, maybe like reduced your maximum hand size. So like every time you used it, you drew cards, but you also reduced your max hand size each time. Ouch. That would be wild. Interesting. Yeah, the one ring, though, is it good enough to play at mythic level? I think any monocolor EDH deck probably is going to be playing this because it's just so powerful for card draw. I would agree. And if you have anything on the battlefield that says you can flash in artifacts, you can give yourself protection from everything. Yeah, that is true. Any kind of like uh, counter manipulation, like for example, the new Glissa that just came out, where you can remove three counters from target permanent. I mean, just this goes in that deck and you're never going to pay life. Ooh, I play that deck. That is a good point, David. Let's move on to Gandalf the Grey. Not the white yet, but this is Gandalf the Grey. It's three, a blue, and a red for a 3-4 legendary creature, Avatar Wizard. It says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, choose one that hasn't been chosen. 
The first one says you may tap or untap target permanent. Or Gandalf the Grey deals three damage to each opponent. Or copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Or put Gandalf on top of its owner's library. Dave, what do we think of Gandalf the Grey? I think this card is weird, to be completely honest. Um, I don't see Gandalf as being an is it wizard. So this is another one of the things where it's like, I feel like making the jump between Lord of the Rings and Magic the Gathering, like the, the colors do things in Magic the Gathering, and they don't necessarily, I think, make a smooth transition here. Um, I don't see Gandalf as being blue red. I see him as being a little bit more blue white. But maybe the reason why this one's blue red is because like maybe Gandalf the white is going to be a blue white card instead. I also think his abilities kind of are a little bit weird here. Um, I don't really see Gandalf doing three of these. The the only mode here that I actually put down as like really being Gandalf is his last one because he just fucking disappears all the time in the story. <laughs> like especially in the Hobbit, like he's just always piecing out. He's busy, man. Yeah, I mean, I I could see that, but. I don't know. People were trying to guess on why he was blue red and that makes purple and purple is what they use for kind of like a black. <laughs> I don't know. Where are we going here? Dude, did we just go in the weirdest circle? <laughs> like you know that there is a black color in magic. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But I mean, mostly depicted on like swamps and stuff, when it comes to magic, they depict it as purple. I'm aware. And his, and his him being gray, gray closest to black, you know, kind of. So they the, think Gandalf the white will just be white. The mental gymnastics that I am trying yeah, that was to, hard, to keep up with dude, you is insane. I'm, I'm just telling you, that's what I read, okay? You need to go sleep. I Heck. should. <laughs> uh, yeah, but this card's interesting. I think later on we will talk about this as a commander when we do a commander grades for this product. Yeah. But, kind of a bummer that you only get to do I mean obviously unless you can somehow get him on the field again but I hate the whole only choosing one right you only get to do these one once well it's one of you cast instant sorcery it's not yeah, you have to choose one, one that hasn't been chosen you choose one that hasn't been chosen sure alright so once once you choose to copy it you can't do that again true actually it, yeah it is also not a may it's a must so eventually Gandalf's gonna go all peace off Oh, I guess that kind of makes sense then. And then you'll draw him again, then you'll cast him again, then you'll do his stuff. Okay. I mean, on the bright side, this is going to be phenomenal for dodging commander tags. That's true. True. Well, the more I... Yeah, okay. I can see it now. Oh, I see it. It makes sense. <laughs> well, let's talk about the guy that Gandalf helped. And that is the main guy himself. This is Frodo Sauron's Bane. Frodo Sauron's Bane is one white mana for a 1-2 legendary creature, Halfling Citizen. Has an ability where you can pay a white or black and a white or black. It says if Frodo Sauron's Bane is a citizen, it becomes a Halfling Scout with base power and toughness 2-3 and lifelink. Has another ability where you can pay 3 black. It says if Frodo is a scout, it becomes a Halfling Rogue with whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. If the ring has tempted you four or more times this game. Otherwise, the ring tempts you. So, this was actually part of the spoiler, or not spoiler, but leaked Leak, information yeah. that was found in the trash. Which confirmed this was a real It part. was real. Yeah. It's um, like a weird, a weird take on the level up mechanic, right? Not weird, still, I guess, but... We've seen this... Over and over and over, and I feel like we have one in standard right now. Yeah, like you can't uh, do the you can't do the black pips before doing the first one kind of thing. Exactly, just like you just said, leveling it up. Um, what do we think of the mechanic of the ring tempting you? We don't really know what it does. Yeah, it's, I mean, it just tempts you, and then this ability happens. But otherwise, does it tempting you have a negative effect? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure some cards say if the ring has tempted you, you get this. Like, I mean, this card says it right here. If you've got right. the ring tempted you four times, I assume it's just a counter that just goes on you. 
but yeah, hitting someone just to make them lose the game is wild. I actually, from just like a a design standpoint of this card, I love the way that this card is designed. Um, So black in Magic is a very selfish color, and I feel like as the storyline progressive and Frodo's kind of slowly gives in more and more to the ring, Mm -hmm. um, especially like the scene that we see here is like the climax where he's standing in Mount Doom and he's debating as to whether or not he's going to actually dispose of the ring. Um, But black in Magic the Gathering is a very selfish color, and it cares a lot about itself. And we kind of see that reflected here also on the card, and it, it mirrors Frodo's journey. So like... He starts off as white, and then it's the white or black pip. So it's like you could kind of play with both. And then the final version here is like it's three hard black. So it's like you're definitely 100%. You're down that road. He, it's like it's this is the point where it's like he is fully corrupted, and he's fully going for it. Yeah, From the lore cool. standpoint, makes sense. Really good storytelling in a card. I, I do really like this card. Yeah, this card has to attack four times. Not necessarily like connect. There's no? other there's other cards that says the ring tempts you. Oh, I guess that's true too. Okay, okay. But yeah, it's gonna be a home card by itself though. Yeah, this card. If this creature deals combat damage, got it. That player loses the game. <laughs> if you have four and if not, it tempts you. Got it. So it's like, I'm tempted. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. You're dead. Mm-hmm. Essentially, that. It's a good one drop, dude. It is a good one drop. It's legendary too. Make it a commander. Next up is Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil is a white, blue, black, red, green for a 4 4 legendary creature, God Bard. It says as long as there are four or more lore counters among sagas you control, Tom Bombadil has hexproof and indestructible. And whenever the final chapter ability of a saga you control resolves, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal the saga card. Put that card on the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This ability triggers only once each turn. Now, I just want to say this real quick. This Uh, sounds like a Steven card to me, and I'm sad he's not (laughs) here to discuss it with us. I can see a little bit of that. I can see 100% of that. He loves his enchantments, and he loves his random five-color cards. I wanted to clarify, though, after you read it again, it made me think, the way they word it, four or more counters among sagas, you... Doesn't that just mean four sagas? No. Sometimes only ever one lore counter on a saga at a time? No, it depends on which like step you're on. So each at the beginning of your draw step, you're going to put an additional one of the lore counters on. So if you have a saga that's on like its second counter, oh, there, that's or its for, second okay, step, that's it'll have works. two counters on it. For some reason, mm-hmm. I thought the thing just like moved down. I forgot you added it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, yep. This card's interesting, dude. Another cool five-color commander. Yeah. I uh, I like it. David, as a fan of Lord of the Rings, God Bard, interesting, right? Um, I guess. I don't know. I He is a really weird character. He's basically just kind of like, he does his own thing. He kind of minds his own business. And he's, for lack of a better term, kind of just like immortal. He's just always existing. And he never really like does a whole lot, really. He just kind of sticks to himself. So, well, that's, I don't know. I think the card is really cool. He's a storyteller that just yeah. kind of like keeps on rocking in the free world, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. The way you're describing him, it's crazy that the card kind of does what you're saying. He just keeps existing. You get rid of the lore counter of a saga, boom, you get another saga. Yep. And then the, the hexproof and indestructible here, um, I think that fits into. I'm kind of interested in like how it's he doesn't always have those things just from like a lore perspective. I mean, he's a character that is pretty much immortal. He's he was around the story like he was around Middle Earth for the entire time. Yeah, I, I think this card's pretty powerful, to be honest. Uh, sagas can be sometimes backbreaking. It's interesting to think as one of the I mean, Hmm. Because some of these sagas now they flip, right? So it's even more yeah. valuable. As soon as they flip, you get another saga. That's awesome. Yeah, and it sticks around. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to some lands here, David. Let's start with the Shire. The Shire is a legendary land that says it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature. You can tap it to add a green. And as another ability where you can pay one and a green, tap it, tap an untapped creature you control. 
to create a food token. That's a lot to create a food token, dude. <laughs> Heard you like food. I mean, mana, tap, tap something else. Here's your chicken. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the Shire, David? There is, okay, so I think that this card is pretty neat. I think that, I don't know, it's it's silly and it's playful and it's probably exactly what the Shire needs to do because the Hobbits are silly and playful people. So I'm here for that. Um, they said that this set is going to have a legendary theme, which totally makes sense. I don't think that this card is going to be very difficult to have it just come in and be able to tap for the green immediately. Or I guess tap and be able to make the food token immediately. Um, I do think that this card is kind of interesting and that you can just always repeatedly make a food token. So if you are in a deck that cares about tokens or uh, if you're playing, oh my goodness, what is the name of the card? The one that like whenever you make a food token, you also make a clue and a, and a treasure. Oh, uh, cards. In you mean Academy Manufacturer? Academy Manufacturer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we totally did not look that up. We, we 100% remember that. <clears throat> yeah, we're good. We're smart. I don't know. I mean, it, it's a cool card. I don't think that food tokens on their own are really all that impactful but i like the design i like the design too it's very flavorful i feel like it all these cards so far have been just nailing the flavor did you just stress flavorful because this card makes food pretty no clever. pretty clever <laughs> i like that a lot uh going to the opposite direction we're going to mount doom mount doom is also a legendary land you can tap it, pay one life to add a black or a red. Has another ability we can pay one, a black and a red. Tap it, Mount Doom deals one damage to each opponent. And it has another ability we can pay five, a black and a red. Tap it, sacrifice Mount Doom and a legendary artifact. Choose up to two creatures, then destroy the rest. Activate only as a sorcery. I hate this card. Dude, board or wipe on a Rakdos land is crazy. Player, why do you hate it? Well, I hate this card because it's really good, and most of my decks are Rakdos, so that means I need like seven copies of this card. <laughs> Perfect, dude. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but how many legendary artifacts can you set? Uh, I don't know, man. I guess from this point on, we're changing deck design. We're, ch we're changing deck design. Deck design. <laughs> we're making all my decks based on okay, Mountain Doom. I mean, even just like the ping ability is pretty dope. So if I just happen to have a turn where I have extra mana laying around, it's a really cool card. I love the mana fixing on this. I love the fact that it doesn't come in tapped. I don't care at all that it makes me lose a life whenever I'm going to tap it for a black or a red. As a Rakdos player, and I, I love this card. This is fantastic. It's very, very flavorful again, David. Yeah. Very flavorful. That last ability is 100% on point. And even just like tapping it and hurting yourself with it. I mean, Mount Doom and, and Mordor in general is not a place that's very habitable. So, yep. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, let's move on to an uncommon, but this is a very familiar face. This is Gollum Patient Plotter. Gollum Patient Plotter is one and a black for a 3 1 legendary creature, Halfling Horror. It says when Gollum Patient Plotter leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. You can also pay a black, sacrifice a creature, return Golem from your graveyard to your hand, activate only as a sorcery. Hey. This one was not part of the leak. We did get a Golem, but we didn't get this one. It tempts you with the ring, though. Just him and Frodo going together. Yes, yeah, so we don't normally talk about all the uncommons, but I did want to bring that one or this one up specifically for a the reason that it does have also the tempt in the ring mechanic. Um, so we do know that it's going to be on multiple cards. Uh, the other reason why is because number one, Gollum is super cool, and then I wanted to ask a question: <laughs> Do you think that they might have like a flip card with Gollum and Smeagol, where they jump back and forth? Oh, dude, we're like they're constantly fighting to keep that'd be sick. Yeah, I, I would love the idea of it. I don't know if there's going to be any like double face cards in this set, but I think that would be a really, really cool design. Well, that would be really the other cool. card that got leaked was called Gollum the Conspirator, which was an interesting leak. Yeah, we haven't seen that we'll, one yet. We'll talk about that card when it's actually announced. Um, if you wanted to see the leak, you can find it on our channel. It's a little short. Yep. But as this is a card, um, pretty sweet. It's a way to get that ring tempting you, man. 
Yeah. Depending on what the tempting for the ring does, too. I mean, this could actually be pretty solid. It's cheap, easy to get into play. I don't care if this thing dies. The ring yeah. tempts you. So it, this I, is a counter, right? This is a counter. It's not saying counter, though. It, it doesn't say counter, so I, I don't know if this is going to be a counter. We have to keep track of it. In some way, yes. I'll have to clarify that, yeah. There, there's, mm-hmm. It's got to be like a counter of some sort. But does that mean then you can... Wait, maybe they don't want you to be able to proliferate it. I mean, that's a good point. Because if you proliferate it really quick... Then boom, yeah. You get those four, and then... They lose the game, in. like... Yeah. So who knows? Yeah, can you imagine proliferating on... Uh, I declare no blocks? All right, cool. So in response... Boom, boom, I'm boom, gonna you pro- did. I'm going to proliferate my ring tempting up to four, and you lose. Yeah, that's... Okay. Maybe it can't be a... Counter then. I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious to see how they handle this. I mean, it could be because none of these have reminder text. So we don't true. actually know how this mechanic works. That's true. Hmm. All speculation, baby. Let's move on to some of the buy a box slash box topper cards they announced. These are reskinned cards in the world of Lord of the Rings. David, do you want to go ahead and talk about these four? Yeah, I would love to. Um, I like the design of these. So the we have the Bridge of Khazad Doom, which is Ensnaring Bridge. We have Valley of Gorgoth, which is Wasteland. The Party Tree, which is the Great Henge. And then the Bio Box from World is Lorien Brooch, and it's Trailblazer's Boots. Yeah. That's a good... It's, it's funny, because I feel like we've... Shane and I mentioned this when we saw the stream today. Trailblazer's Boots, we've been talking about more recently. Yeah, like I've never... Granted, it's, I mean, it's not that old, right? But it's, I've never played with it. I put it in one of my decks. And I'm like, what What the heck? Why do I know about I'm, this card? I'm pretty sure you were in high school after the card got printed, Shane. Okay, so I feel old now, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, Box Toppers, they're back and cool. I really like the fact that they're, these are not new cards. The same way that uh, Secret Lair handles it, this is. This is a good way to do it. I would love to open up a Great Henge. I'm just saying that. I'm sure you would. That I cool mean, all, Wasteland, yeah. All, all three of these cards are really dope, and then all three of these cards, I know that they also have a pretty decent price tag to it. The Great Henge has been climbing up in price for a while, and Snaring Bridge sees modern play already, so Bridge of Khazad Doom being a super cool like old art that you can play there. And then, who doesn't love Wasteland, so... Yeah. Absolutely. Four cool reprints out and pre-order some stuff at your local LGS. Um, Let's move on to the basic lands they announced. Dave, these are your favorites, right? I fucking hate <laughs> these. <laughs> Why? Explain. So, like, on the surface, I think that, yeah, okay, it's cool. They have artwork for the Lord of the Rings, and it, sh- like, showcases Middle Earth. So, on that side, it's dope. On the other side, however... None of these are like actually color coded aside from the fact that they have the the plate for the card. So like where it says mountain or swamp and then <laughs> past that point, like these don't actually form a panorama, which I feel like if you're going to use the map, make the whole map, like make things connect and make sure that it like actually goes around smoothly. And this doesn't do that. So it's frustrating to me. I, w- I would have personally loved it had we gotten different artwork of things. So for example, like, I don't know, we, we might get them as like legendary lands or something, but how cool would it be if instead of these for like a forest, we got a picture of like Fangorn where you got to see like an int in the background or like um, whenever it came to like a mountain, maybe we got to see like the Mines of Moria or we got to see like hell, even like Helm's Deep carved into the mountainside. Like I think, I think it would have been really cool to have seen that and then also get a glimpse more of Middle Earth. And I don't feel like this really does it for me. That was a lot, dude. <laughs> that was a lot. I apologize. No, I said to unpack all that. I think they're um, cool. I think they're cool too. <laughs> I get your point though. They're all green. I mean, I don't know if that was his point, but yeah, he said that the only color coding was the top and bottom. That is one of my true. complaints. True, true, true. I will give you that. But based on where they are in the map, it's like a certain thing, right? Like let's let's take that island right there in the middle, for example. You can see zoomed in on the very top is the planes to the very left. 
right? Like, uh-huh. Some of them connect and some of them like overlap, but it doesn't actually form a complete map. Which my thought on this is if you were going to make a map of Middle Earth, do the complete map. That's true. I understand. Maybe that. it just didn't line up, dude. No, that sounds stupid. Never mind. Well, like if you look at the two swamps, they directly overlap. Like the first swamp you see in the picture here is a zoomed in, like upper yeah. western portion of the second swamp. And like, yeah, yeah, the first one shows the dead marshes, but like, the, it, it just it bothers me that it doesn't actually like connect. I feel like it's a really missed opportunity, and if you can't do that, then try and differentiate it in a way that's going to better showcase the world you're trying to to convey. Yeah, I can it's, understand that. We're just nitpicking, though, right? Oh, I'm 100 percent nit- nitpicking. Okay, okay. but okay. I mean, that's that's what we do. Let's move on to the starter decks. The faces of the starter decks. This first one. Aragorn and Arwen wed. It is four generic mana with a green and a white for a 3-6 legendary creature, human elf noble. As vigilance, it says whenever Aragorn and Arwen wed enters the battlefield or attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control. You gain one life for each other creature you control. Hey, wait, are you telling me that green and white are going to care about tokens? And counters. <laughs> and going wide. Gaining life. This is mind blowing. Having vigilance. Yeah. Having vigilance. Oh shit. I just wanted to contribute something here. If only it had reach. Something else green had trample. Uh what do you think is this is a card? Flicker it. Just drop it after you've had a board of a bunch of tokens swing in and kill somebody. Yeah. True. Flickering this would be wild. I feel get like we're going to run like, into that. Oh. Get something like Vorn Clarks on the field just to double all those counters. Well, that would just be dumb. Yeah, dude, it's in the colors, baby. Oh, I know where. I think we're going to run into that problem, though, where the six mana is creeping up there. A couple of deaths, and I don't know. I get you're in green, you can ramp, but. I mean, Gary considering, considering that this is also a pump effect, too, like. This could be the top end of the deck, so you drop this knowing that that plus one plus one is going to be enough damage for you to just kill somebody. Yeah, that's true too. It's also a card for a starter deck, so it's supposed yeah. to be really expensive and possibly not playable. But yeah, I think this is a dope card. Um, as far as the flavor of the card, David, since you've been talking about flavor-wise with all of the Lord of the Rings, what do we think? I think this card's fine from like a overall flavor standpoint. Uh, yeah, it's it's like the king and queen, I guess. And at this point, that's a very noble thing for them to do. They pump up everybody else around them. They're supposed to be like the leader that's going to be able to like strengthen the realms of men. Um, and elves. I don't know. This card is fine. I, I think that it's it's fine. Moving on to Sauron, the lidless eye. Sauron, the lidless eye, is three and a black and a red. For a 4 4 legendary creature, Avatar Horror. It says whenever Sauron, the Lidless Eye, enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. Untap it, it gains haste until end of turn. It also has another ability where you can pay one, a black and a red, that says creatures you control get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Each opponent loses two life. David, we'll start with you. Seems like Mr. a David Rack card. Ghost player. Tell me how you can make infinite colored mana and win the game. Infinite colored mana in Rakdos. Probably the easiest way to do this would be to like loop Doxa with Underworld Breach. Um, I don't think you actually need to do that though. I mean, his ability is pretty gnarly. So punishing each of your opponents, making them lose two life is all right. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but it's decent. Uh, being able to pay three mana and give your creatures plus two plus O oh, and then potentially repeat that over and over and over again. This card is insane. In red is pretty good at making tokens. There's tons of like goblin decks out there that can utilize this. Black, not necessarily the best when it comes to making tokens, but still very capable of doing it. I mean, you have like zombie zombie tokens that you can make in, in black. So um, this is another just go wide commander. And if anything, I find it really weird that they have two starter decks that are both kind of go wide. I feel like this is going to just create monstrous board states where you're smashing 50 creatures into 50 creatures and having a horrible time. Or a great time. I like that his fingers are chopped off, dude. Yeah, how's that go with a flavor, Dave? I mean, Didn't the Sildor cuts off. Yeah, 
he does eventually like he does get his fingers chopped off whenever his healer cuts off the ring um if anything i like the seeing stone that's there in the middle and you can see like the agonizing faces that he's watching it on dude i didn't even look at that part yet also, there's, there's like little ghosties all around him, too. Tower that does not sleep. Yeah. Um, Moving on to not the face commanders, but commanders that are in the decks of the precons. Uh, this first one, Sam Loyal Attendant. Sam Loyal Attendant is one, a green and a white for a 2-4 legendary creature halfling peasant. It's got partner with Frodo, Adventurous Hobbit. It says at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a food token. And activated abilities of foods you control cost one less to activate. Say it, Shane. He's making taters. <laughs> Potato. Making the stew. Isn't that right, Dave? All right, look. I am not here for this card. Okay. All right. Sam, he, he might not. You know what? No, no. Okay. He's We're gonna... loyal. He He's is. Loyal. Sam is a badass, okay? And the fact that he is labeled as a peasant is offensive. Oh, God. <laughs> but he's partners with Frodo. Yeah, it's just like, look, at one point, sure, he, he works for Frodo. And then, like, later on, dude, they're, they're homies, man. Like, this, right. this story doesn't happen without Sam. The legendary land, the True. Shire, is very flavorful with this card. There you Makes go again sense. with flavorful. <laughs> it's fun to say, dude. It's food. <laughs> Tongue. Uh, but yeah. Sam, loyal attendant. Making food. As far as a cart goes, I mean, this is awful. I, I don't want a food commander. Yeah, but he only makes food now sacrifice for one instead of two. That's great. Still don't care. Yeah. Dude, maybe the deck will care about food. You don't know. Well, yeah, Frodo's probably going to consume it. Yeah, and it's going to buff the team. The whole team Make gets like a plus five, plus five. Uh, you know what? Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> this other card, not a face commander, but in one of the decks, is Radagast, Wizard of Wilds. Radagast, Wizard of Wilds, is two, a green, a blue, for a three, five legendary creature avatar wizard as Ward 1. It says, Beasts and Birds you control have Ward 1. And whenever you cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, choose 1. You can create a 3-3 green beast creature token or create a 2-2 blue bird creature token with flying. This is very Thanos. Yeah, so I feel like we've already seen this before. I mean, it's very on point for Radagast, so as a card as a whole, I actually really do like this. Okay. It also gives all your things Ward 1, and it has Ward 1. Yeah, that seems good. It's true. It's uh, it. I feel like it fits in a Tano's deck. I think Tano's is a little better because it copies beasts and birds, right? I am a little concerned about this card. Why? Now that I'm thinking about it, this is going to be in the elves deck, and he cares about things that are five or greater, and then does not make elves. He makes birds and beasts, which totally makes sense for Radagast character. But, like, how many five drops is this elf deck going to have? Is this going to be an elf deck like what we typically see in Magic, where it's a bunch of little mana dorks, and then you're, like, tapping them all for a big payoff? I was really hoping we would get a different direction. Sounds like Billy you David. one it, right? Uh, I'm just kidding. And the final couple cards I want to talk about is they announced separate arts for soul rings that are only found in collector boosters. The other arts are the Elven Soul Rings, the Dwarven Soul Rings, and the Human Soul Rings. They only made 3,000 of the Elven ones. The Dwarven ones, there's only 7,000. And the Human ones, there's only 9,000 of them. All non-foil. But it gets even better than that, because if you wanted it in foil, they also come serialized. And if they were serialized, the Elven ones, there's only 300 of them. The Dwarven ones, there's only 700 of them. And the human ones, there's only 900 foil serialized soul rings. It's ridiculous, dude. I hope you didn't want one. <laughs> dude, they're just... <laughs> it's just so chasey, but whatever. I mean... I get it. They gotta make money. It's incredibly chasey, but you bought Kamigawa packs no, 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 in order no, for no, you to get no, a no, no. hidden Sugu. No, I didn't. 
this this a hundred percent is a product that is marketed to people like you. What are you talking? I yeah, I'm, I didn't buy a bunch of legends either, dude. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> And you also weren't fucking counting down for the number of serialized cards you could get out of the Brothers War. Dude, exactly. <laughs> I don't want this. You're right. He's buying a case of collector's edition for this shit. Mark my words. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be we'll pretty not interesting. See. Hey, I'm ready to crack open some packs. Shane, are you? No. I'm... I have a question, but I'm, I'm going to wait for one one other thing that we're going to talk about, about how effective this serialization is in order to get you to buy packs of magic cards. Okay. We will talk about the what you alluded to, and this is the One Ring Alternate Edition Serialized Foil Only Art Ever. It is a one of one of the One Ring. There's only one version ever created. It's going to be exclusively in collector's packs. So exclusively that they don't even know what they're going to put it in because they said there is a chance that it could just be in a collector pack in a bundle. So good luck. <laughs> Dave, ask the question. I'll give you my answer. How likely is it that you go out and buy packs with the hope of opening up a serialized card, especially knowing that there is a one of one existing somewhere out there? I'll tell For you me, the zero. I will tell you the answer. It is the same reason someone buys a lottery ticket. I mean, I get that. This card is going to be ridiculously expensive. Um, it's not going to actually happen because what's going to really happen is either A, this card's going to end up in a landfill because apparently that's a thing recently, <laughs> or B, <laughs> Some 12-year-old is going to be gifted a collector's booster for their birthday, and they're going to be looking at it. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to backtrack. I'm not even going to say a 12-year-old, because a 12-year-old might actually play this game. Um, there's going to be some kid who's going to be gifted like, a collector's booster for their birthday that doesn't even play Magic the Gathering. He's going to open it up and going to see this card and be like, huh, I don't know what the fuck that does. <laughs> yeah. I can't read this. Throws it away. If only. The question, the real question is, you might be right there and some random kids open it. So I'll ask you this before we finish up. Will we see this card on social media? Will it actually exist? Will someone actually open this? I don't know. I was talking in the chocolate factory, dude. But here's the thing, though, right? It's a one of one. If someone opens it, it just kills the prices of the sales of the card, right? Because no one wants to open packs anymore. It's found. Yeah, yeah. There are a bunch of other serialized cards in here. And the serialized soul rings, if anything, I think are actually probably more playable. This is, a, a, well, okay, playable from a standpoint. Like, realistically speaking, nobody's playing this card. If you open this card, you're not playing it. You're going to send it in to go be graded. You're going to put it in a hard case, and you're going to sit on it until you're ready to go to college and have your college fund paid for. <laughs> True. I like, will just, I'll just say this. I feel like if you look at what we talked about in the very beginning of the video, this is the exact same ring from the exact same art zoomed in with the writing. It's the same artist. Yep. And that's what they did. Yep. I mean, the treatment here is very pretty. I, I, I do think, and to go back to your point previously, because I was thinking about this earlier today, this obviously is going to be one of the first shipments of cards that get sent out. Do you think that this would be like somewhat seeded? So what I mean by that is like, do you think that they're going to send out a collector's booster knowing that it has this ring to a store that's going to be able to sell mass volumes? So like somewhere in a populated area to know for a fact that this card is going to get out there. Because from no like, a, like a PR standpoint, I feel like it would be a blunder if this just never gets found. I think they wait till second printing to print this. I feel like that would be such an asshole move, and that would not guarantee that anybody would ever actually even get this. Yeah, but people are still looking for it. Never know. You know what? You're probably right, because that is definitely the more greedy option. You heard <laughs> it here first. Just wait until the second printing if you want the one ring. Oh, yeah, sometimes just the, the ring makes you do things that you shouldn't. And that's yeah. where we're going to end it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Comment down below what you think of all these cards. Uh, let us let us know what you think of the chase cards, especially. It's very interesting times we are in of Magic the Gathering. 
And while you're down there, check out the description where you'll find links to our social media accounts. That's at Instagram, at TikTok, and at Twitter. All guys at Magic. And until the next video, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Later. Bye-bye.